Tonight, I ask you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts, uh, chapter number 3. Acts chapter number 3, and, and I want to challenge you tonight with three words that Peter speaks here in his sermon uh, to some people. Just three words in Acts 3. We'll begin reading in verse number 11. Acts 3 and, and verse number 11. And there's just three words that, that we'll find here in verse 15 that if we allow to really get into our hearts tonight and we let these words uh, really affect us and let the Word of God change us tonight, we can truly make a difference on this earth for Christ. I don't think I've ever met someone who calls themselves, that's truly a Christian that's living for Christ, that says, I don't want to make an impact for Christ. Can I ask you that tonight? Do you want to make an impact for the Lord Jesus Christ? If you do, there are these three words that I want us to see here, and I want us to live out these words. You know, we can read the Bible, and I hope you read your Bible, but I hope you're living out what the Bible says. Ain't that right? If we want to be true biblical Christians, we must live out what the Word of God says. Let's begin reading here in verse number 11 of Acts 3, as the Bible says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them into the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when, people, when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead. Whereof, and here are the three words, that I pray if you underline or highlight things in your Bible, I pray that you would highlight or underline these next three words because this is the title of our message and these are the three words that if we truly apply them to our life, we can make an impact for Christ. Whereof we are witnesses. Peter's saying, we are witnesses of Jesus Christ raising from the dead. Can I tell you something, church? We are witnesses of the grace and mercy of God tonight. If you're a born-again believer, you've experienced the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why wouldn't we want to tell others about it? We are witnesses. Let's continue reading here in verse number 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did, ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled." And we'll finish reading here in verse number 19. I want you to see Peter's pointed language here. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Would you take this moment with me tonight and just pray over the message that God would speak to us? Dear Heavenly Father, as we humbly come before your throne, once again, Lord, we are thankful to be able to gather here on this Wednesday night. God, we're thankful uh, for the song that was sung that you are God in the mountain, you are also God in the valley. And God, I pray tonight you would help us as we go into your word. We pray that you would open up our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us. But God, I pray that we would be willing to be changed by your word tonight. I pray as we walk out the doors, as, as the sign says, we are entering our mission field, that we would be willing to be a witness for you and we'd be willing to make an impact on this world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us in this hour. We thank and we love you. It's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. The Bible says we are witnesses. I want to take time just to give a synopsis of the first 10 verses uh, of this chapter simply so we can understand 
what has happened. So Peter and John have went up to the temple to pray. As the beginning of the chapter says, it was the ninth hour. It was time to pray. But on their way to the temple, they ran into a lame man. First, I want to stop and say they were going to pray at the temple. It says it was the hour of prayer. Can you imagine praying for an hour? Have you ever tried it? Some of you might have. I'll be honest with you. It's hard to pray for an hour, is it not? It's hard to get your mind to stop and to pray for an hour. So this is, I'm just going to give you a little bit of advice. What I tell people is, well, I just, when I try to pray for an hour, what happens most of the time? We fall asleep. I'm just going to be honest with you. So this is what I tell people. I just got so comforted in the presence of the Lord, I just couldn't help but fall asleep. That makes you sound super spiritual, and who's going to argue against that, right? But here's John and Peter. They're going up to pray at the temple, and they come by this lame man. And the Bible says he sat daily by the gate called Beautiful. The people that were around, they knew this lame man. They knew that this man was lame. He could not walk. But as they were walking, he asked them for something. He asked them for money. And I love Peter's response because he says, Silver and gold have I none. But Peter wasn't going to leave him with nothing. He was going to offer him something that was way better than money can buy. He was going to offer him something way better than gold or silver. He was going to offer him salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's simply what he does. He tells him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happens, this man believes on Christ, this man gets saved, and he was healed from being lame. He began to walk and to leap and to praise God. This man who was just a few seconds ago lame and could not walk has now been healed because he believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened is it drew a crowd. And all the people saw this man. Remember, he sat there daily. And they saw this man walking and, and leaping and praising. And they realized who it was. It was the lame man. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. And that brings us to verse number 11. And we find that they run to find out what happened to this lame man. And Peter tells them what happened. He became a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope tonight that you are a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what a witness is? It's somebody that experiences something. Have you ever been a witness of something? Maybe it's not a good thing that you've been a witness of. I want to share just a little story with you. And what I, what I love is I can tell these kind of stories and you understand because Brother Chad even mentioned this word, hollers. If I tried to say in Texas about a holler, they had no clue what I was talking about. But thank God I'm with my West Virginians tonight, and I can say the word holler. I grew up in a holler on the eastern side of Canal County called Quincy Holler. Maybe some of you know where that's at. Hopefully you do. Thank you, brother. I'm glad you, I'm glad you know. I was really nervous of anybody on this end. Not even the Canal Valley. This is a whole different county. But my brother and I, we were mean holler boys is what we were. We were all mean holler boys. It's just, it's just how we grew up. Well, my, I love the amens. You know where I'm going with this then. So we didn't have trash bins, so we had to build our own. So my grandfather built this big old wooden trash bin. We'd throw our trash in there. But one thing kept happening to our trash bin. We would notice that trash would get strung out all across the creek and the road, and we would be the ones to go pick it up where it would bring in bears and coyotes, and you guys understand all that. And so we noticed what was going on. It was Stray cats. Now, I'm going to stop here and preface. If you love cats, plug your ears. Okay? But I want you to notice this. This is all under the blood. I was not saved at this point. I was like seven years old. I was not saved yet. All right? We would shoot these cats. We'd kill these cats. My grandmother gave us a list of things that we could not shoot or kill. You know, cardinals, blue jays, dogs. Well, our neighbors we didn't get along with down the road had this very annoying dog. My brother was a lot more mean than I was. He was about, he's three years older than I am too. He told me, he said, I'm going to shoot their dog. My reaction is, Zach, don't do that. We will get in trouble. We are told not to shoot the dogs. Because Mama Pearl didn't play around when it comes to, to, to discipline. I'll say the correct word for it, and you all know what I mean by that. Well, he shoots the dog, and you know it hits the dog. I mean, you see the blood, and I'm just scared. 
at this moment. I drop my gun. I take off running because we, we have the BB and pellet guns. Like, it ain't no airsoft paintball. Like, this is the real deal. Like, it's going to hurt some. Well, not before long, the neighbor comes marching up, beats on the door and says, one of your grandsons shot my dog. So what happens? The two witnesses get questioned. One was guilty, one was innocent. Well, I was asked first, what happened to her dog? I said, I didn't shoot it. I was being honest. <laughs> what does my brother do? He says the same thing I did, but he's not being honest. I said, I didn't shoot it. We both got disciplined, which was ridiculous. I didn't do anything wrong. But here's the point of the whole story. I was a witness of something that happened, therefore I could be questioned about it. Let me ask you something tonight. If you're a witness of Christ, could someone ask you about Christ and you tell them? Or simply, can we do this? Could you just go ahead and be a witness of Christ without anybody having to ask you? See, my grandmother could ask me what happened to the dog because I saw what happened to the dog. I was a witness of what happened. As I've said, are you a witness of the mercy and grace of God? If not, tonight is a great night to become a witness of the grace and mercy of God. I hope we all were witnesses of the grace and mercy, but I want us to look at our passage because as witnesses, we have these three things. This, the passage shows us three things that we have because we are witnesses. First, I want us to look in verses 11 and 12 and see this. Number one, we have this moment to share Christ. We have this moment to share Christ. What does the book of James tell us about our life? That it's like a vapor. Your life, this moment, you have the opportunity to share about the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that uh, Brother Chad said that y'all's church's desire is to have a missionary in every country. And I hope you reach that goal. Because why? Because there are people that need witnesses going and telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only that, there are people still here in West Virginia and in Hurricane and Taze Valley that need you being a faithful witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have this moment to share Christ. We can picture this lame man as he's there outside the temple. He's healed from his lameness. He was healed because he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's holding on to Peter and John. And honestly, I don't think he's holding on to Peter and John because he needed help standing up. I don't honestly know why he's holding on to them, but I think he's pretty thankful that they shared and they were witnesses. Don't you? Do you remember the person that was a witness and shared Christ with you? Amen. Aren't you thankful for them? Yeah. I'm sure thankful that someone showed interest in a, in a holler boy and shared Christ with me. I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for faithful youth workers. One of my youth workers, Miss Sarah McClanahan, is sitting right here with us tonight. I'm thankful that she was a witness for Christ. Because now, look, it's affected my life in so much that we're going to a different country. We're serving the Lord. You may think that being a witness doesn't have an effect, but now, 10 years later, Miss Sarah McClanahan can see her effect in being a faithful witness. There's evidence to this man's transformed life. He's walking around, he's leaping, he's praising. Because Peter and John were witnesses. And that's what drew the crowd. There's nothing like a changed life that will draw a crowd. This man didn't preach. This man did not say one word. All he did was act different because he was different because he met Christ. Do you remember how different you were after you met Christ? I'm thankful, and I'm thankful he's still changing me today. The process, like I got saved, but now he's just making me more like himself. Being a witness. This man, how convicting is that? This man didn't speak one word. It was his actions that drew the crowd. The Bible says they came running. I don't know about you. I hate running. If you like running, you're like my pastor down in Texas loves running. I think he's weird. I've told him that to his face. I'm not talking behind his back. Love him to death. I'd go, I'd go to bat for him. I'd go to battle. We'd be in a foxhole together. But I told him, I was like, that's weird. You like running? He says, yeah, it makes me feel good. Never have I ran. It makes me feel good. So much that I went and bought a bike to exercise. Like, I don't even like running that much. So you know when somebody's running, there's a reason they're running. They are wondering what happened to this lame man. What happened to this lame man? And you know what Peter does? Peter does not set back. 
And you know, we give Peter a hard time about he was the uh, disciple that put his foot in his mouth, and he quite often did. But this moment when Peter decided to open his mouth was perfect because he was being a witness. He took advantage of the moment that God had given him. And he took this moment that this lame man had drew a crowd and he turned into an opportunity to do one thing, to preach Jesus Christ. I love what Acts 2.42 says, we cease not to preach and teach the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, how we should live by that. We cease not, we do not stop in preaching the Lord and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. But he took advantage of this opportunity to preach about Christ. See, Peter knew just because the phenomenon of miracles doesn't bring salvation itself, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But he said, all right, they're here. Let me be a witness. I was already a witness to one. Let me be a witness to these that have come together. And that's what he does. He uses this moment to make sure that these people knew that the power. Look at verse 12. He says, "Why? Are, it didn't come from me. It didn't come from John. Where did this power come from? There's only one logical explanation to where that power comes from. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. These men, they were, they were Jewish men, which I'll get into here in a moment. But he denied that it was his power or his holiness. And he took advantage of his moment. Can I ask you something tonight? What are you doing with your moment? What are you doing with your moment? Your life is your moment that God has given you. What are you doing with it? James says it's like a vapor. You know what happens sadly is a lot of times we pass up our moments. We pass up the opportunities that God has given us to share the gospel. And you may say, well, I never get the opportunity. And I don't believe that, honestly. I think every single one of us as believers gets opportunities and moments to share about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not saved to sit around. Jesus says, occupy till I come. That's an active word, occupy is. I hope that we are taking advantage of our moments. And here's the amazing thing. There are tons of methods out there that we can use in sharing the gospel. I bet your church here has gospel tracks somewhere. I think that is the best tool if you want to talk to someone about the gospel. I, I can tell you this. I watched a two-year-old in Slovenia hand out gospel tracks. She just, and everyone took them from her. People would tell me no. No one told my daughter no. I said, God, thank you. She didn't know. Honestly, she didn't know what she was doing. But you know what she saw? She saw her daddy being a witness. Therefore, she wanted to be a witness. Moms and dads, your kids need you to be a witness to see that it's worth being a witness. You know, I pray every morning for my children that they would get saved. As they get older, they, you know, everyone has the choice. God has given us choice. We must choose. He, he doesn't make us. We can't make people. I wish we could make people because I'd make everyone get saved that I come in contact with. But one thing I pray is I say, Lord, I pray that Mackenzie and I make living for you look so good our kids want to do it. How are you being, how are you using your moments? Don't pass up your opportunities. I love... I love, love, love being at, I, I call it my gas pump ministry. I love when people pull up to the gas pump with me. We've got a bigger car now, so it takes me a moment to fill up, so I'm there for a moment. But I love, and some of you might, I, I love when someone pulls up in this big jacked up diesel, and I'm like, Lord, I pray it's on empty. Because I know I got 15 minutes till it's filled up. And I, I, I can go really in depth in 15 minutes. But what are we doing with our, just little moments like that. I pray the Holy Spirit will just, Prick our hearts and say, share about Christ. I'll never forget the, the gentleman that did my video. Uh, him and I went to college together, and we, we got to go to England together for four months. And, and we, we got to do this thing called street preaching, which I don't know if you've ever stood on a box or on a busy street and preached the gospel, but it is the most electrifying and nerve-wracking thing I think anybody can do as a Christian. But I remember we got up on that box and we'd been preaching all day. And next thing I know is Drew, who did my videos up on the box. And this, this I mean, just big old 
Islamic man come marching down angry because one of our tracks had said something against the Quran. And, and next thing I know is he's up in my face and he's yelling. And I said, look, sir, I will have a civil conversation with you. But if you continue to yell, we cannot talk. I said, I will not participate in this. He calmed down and we began to talk. And I said, well, this is where this says in scripture about how this is wrong. And, we, and next thing I know is this tall, linky Jehovah's Witness guy decided he thought he needed to defend me for some reason. So he comes and chest bumps this Muslim guy. And I mean, they, he starts yelling at him. Well, the Muslim guy gets angry again. He starts yelling at him. And before I know it, I am standing between a very strong looking guy and a very tall guy on this side. And they have their fist up. I'm like, what is, what is about to happen? And I, next thing I look is there's like 40 to 50 people that have stomped at our box. And they have their cell phones out. Well, in this moment of me like trying to break up this almost fist fight, I don't hear preaching from the box anymore, and I notice that Drew's beside me. I turned to Drew, and I said, Hey, this is the biggest crowd we've had all day. Get back up on the box. Why are you stopping? He said, Okay. I, the adult, I, w I was 20 years old. I was, an I was an adult. But the adult that was with us had left to go do a funeral, so we were left on our own. It was like our second week in England. I'd never been out of West Virginia barely before. I had no clue. And I was like, just go get back up on the box. And he did. And over 40, 50 people heard the gospel. Hey, yes, I used an almost fist fight to share the gospel, and I would do it again. <laughs> I took advantage of the moment. I took advantage of the opportunity. Why is that? Because Christ is worthy. He's worth to share about. So what are we doing with our moments? For this, this moment we have, secondly, I want you to see this as witnesses, we have this, and I think this is probably the best point. We have the message of Christ. Because we are witnesses, we have the message of Christ. You know, Peter does not take long to point the attention to the one who deserves it. He takes and points the attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he makes ten references to the Lord in his sermon. And I love how he starts out. Because remember who his crowd was. Where was he at? He was talking to Jewish men. And this is his first statement about Christ. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers. What a bold statement to make before Jewish men that Jesus Christ is God. And that's the exact message that we're telling people. The gospel is all about Jesus being God, about him coming and dying. And being buried but not staying dead. He was saying, hey, he's God. He opens up with an excellent statement. Later on, Peter even refers to Jesus as the Holy One and the Just. And this is huge. Because this title, the Holy One and the Just, or specifically the Holy One term, is used more than 40 times in the Old Testament as a high and glorious title for Jehovah. Can you believe that? This man is stating to Jewish men, that Jesus is God. He's making it all about Christ. He even goes on and says, hath glorified his son. He's making Jesus what we should make Jesus, the focal point of the message. And he goes on to say, whom you delivered up, whom ye delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You know, Peter was telling about Jesus, but there's one thing he did not leave out. He did not leave out their sin. When we're sharing the gospel, we can't leave out sin. Amen. There's something Christ has saved us from. Right. Not just eternity without God, but he saved us from sin. And aren't you glad for that? Yeah. Oh, there's a song, and there's, my favorite part of the song says, my sin has been defeated. Aren't you glad Christ has defeated your sin? That we don't have to answer for our sin. That our sin was placed on him at the cross of Calvary. What a wonderful message. And he, he, he plunges that sword of conviction into their hearts. He boldly set the, the death of Christ right where it belonged. See, here, here's the amazing thing. is it, The death of Christ was not just on the Jewish people. They were not alone responsible. But also the Gentiles, the Romans. They worked together, did they not? Did I? The Jew and Gentile are both guilty 
their sin, all their sin was placed. But if you truly want to get deeper into it, you want to see why Christ hung on that cross, all you have to do is look into a mirror tonight and see that your sin is what placed him there. And also, his love for you is what kept him there. Aren't you thankful for the love of Christ tonight? Amen. Understand, it's, it's hard for people to hear about their sin. But it's necessary. You may say, it sounds harsh to tell them about their sin. Well, I think it's more harsh to not tell them about their sin and let them go into eternity without God. This message of Christ. He goes on to say, and you desired a murderer, Barabbas. You ever read the crucifixion account and you find this odd character, Barabbas? I'll never forget when I first read that after I got saved for myself and I read, I read this passage for myself, I wanted to jump back in time and just start like punching these Jewish men and, and people that were yelling to crucify Christ. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's, that's just my first thought is I wanted to really go like mixed martial arts on these people because I was like, why are you doing this? Do you not see that this, this man Barabbas does not deserve? He's the one that deserves the cross. And then what I love, what I love is the sweet Holy Spirit came by and said, Eli, you are Barabbas. That should have been my cross. That should have been your cross. But aren't you glad that Christ died in your place on the cross? Don't we have a wonderful message to share? He goes on to talk about how they killed the prince of life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. The prince of life could not stay dead. He's the prince of life. He's the God of the universe. Peter says, we are witnesses. I am so thankful I am a witness of the saving grace of God. Amen. And I am able to share it with others. Talks about faith through the name of Christ is what made this man strong. That's, that's what salvation is, is faith in Christ. What are we doing with this wonderful message of Christ? What are we doing with this wonderful message of the gospel? It's the greatest message ever to grace the face of the earth. That we messed up. It was our sin. And we couldn't fix it. The law proved that we couldn't fix ourselves. So what does God do before the foundations of the earth? He has this plan in place to die on the cross, to, to come down in human form and to live 33 years and to be tempted as we were. But never once did Christ sin. And then what happens? He goes and, 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 he, and he goes through this humiliation and he's betrayed by someone who was, who was a close friend, a close disciple. And he goes to the cross. And they beat him. And they put crowns on him. Like, I mean, big old crowns. Not just not what we get stuck with in the woods, but I'm talking about big old crowns. Or uh, thorns, excuse me. A, a big old crown. And, and then he's spit on and, and, and ridiculed all the way up and he carries his own cross to the point he needed help. And you can imagine they've already ripped the flesh off his back and then they put him up on the cross and they, they put the nails in his hands, they put the, the nails in his feet and then they lift him up and his back that's already been mutilated is scratching against this. This wood wasn't sanded down. There were splinters going into his back and at any time he wanted to, you know he said seven things on the cross, any time he wanted to he had to lift himself up. And he did that for you and he did that for me. And then he died. He died. He took your sin, every, every sin. And he died. But then he was buried. But aren't you glad the story doesn't end there? The account, the actual historical account does not stop because three glorious days later, what we just celebrated about a week ago, he rose from the dead. And now because of that, we have victory in Christ. Oh, don't you love that song? Oh, victory in Jesus. Let's live like we have victory and share this message with people. Amen. Please do something with the message of Christ. Lastly, I want you to see this. We have this moment to share Christ. We have the message of Christ. And here's the great thing. We get to share it, and then we get to move people towards conversion. Move them towards conversion. We get to literally bring them to Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Here's the thing. Most of the time, we'll just get to share. But Peter had an opportunity here to tell them to repent. You know, he says, yet now, brethren, he loves these people. He, it, I, we, to really show that we love someone, we have to share the gospel with them. 
I heard this. If we're not sharing the gospel, it's for two reasons. Either we don't love people enough to share the gospel, or we really don't believe it works. We have no excuse. We get to bring them to the point of choice. He calls them brethren. He loves them. He knows what's going to fix their, their issue. It's the gospel. He says that through ignorance they did it. And we've got to be honest, in, in our world today, we're dealing with a lot of people that are ignorant. They know nothing. The two young men I shared about had never heard the gospel of Christ before. Both were 18 years old. Could you imagine living for almost 20 years and never hearing the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ? And there's many more Slovenians. And can I say there's even people in our own country and in our state of West Virginia that have been told wrong about Christ that need faithful witnesses like you. I love, he goes on to say, he has so fulfilled. Remember, he's talking to Jewish men. He's saying all those things of the Old Testament, everything of the Old Testament points to Christ. And then Peter gets right down to it, repent. Repent ye therefore, turn from the old life that you are living without Christ and turn towards the new life that he offers you right now. What a wonderful message. He says, and be converted, believe on Christ. Become a new creature in Christ. Why? So that your sins may be blotted out. Aren't you glad that when you stand in front of God, first, you'll be, you won't be standing at the great white throne of judgment. Aren't you glad for that? You'll be standing at the judgment seat of Christ. Your sins have already been paid, but you're going to stand before every single person is going to stand before God. And I'm glad that Psalm 103.12 is true in my life, that as far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions from us. I hope that's for you tonight. If not, tonight's a great night to get your sins blotted out. Amen. To get them wiped away. When times are refreshing shall come in the presence of God. I'm glad that when I go into the presence of God, it's a time of refreshing. But for a lot of people, it's not going to be a time of refreshing. It's going to be a time of judgment and separation from God for all eternity. So what are we doing to get people to come to Christ. Sharing the message. That's all we can do. It's the choice is up to them after that. I'm, I'm glad for that because it's not on me now. I've done, you've done your duty if you are a witness and you share about Christ. I never forget a man I met in England. His name was Mr. Harris. He became a devout Catholic when he was in his 20s. I met him when he was 77. 50 years and I'd ask him, and he did not believe in the biblical gospel. He actually, I knocked on his door and he answered with a towel over his shoulder because he thought I was a Jehovah's Witness. He said he was going to send me away and never talk to me again. And all he had to say is he would have cookies and coffee. And I, and I came back. I came back. We came back for three months. And we kept telling Mr. Harris. We kept being witnesses to Mr. Harris. And eventually Mr. Harris chose for himself to believe on Christ. Six months after we met him, Mr. Harris was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And three weeks after his diagnosis, he met his Savior face to face. God took two Americans traveling for over 4,000 miles to bring a 77-year-old Catholic man who'd been Catholic for over 50 years to bring him to Christ. And what I'm thankful for now is God has called a family of Americans to travel over 6,000 miles to a place that has barely any gospel witness to bring people to Christ. Amen. We are witnesses of what God has done in our life. We're witnesses of Christ. Let's make the most of our moment and be a witness. Let's spread the message of Christ because we're witnesses. And let's move people to choose Christ by sharing the message because we are witnesses. I want to finish with Acts 4.20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You have a testimony that's one of the most useful tools about how you came to know Christ. All you can do is speak the things which you've seen and heard. We're all witnesses 
Here's the question. Are you being a good witness? Let's pray together tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, as we humbly come before your throne once again, Lord, we're thankful that we're able to be witnesses for you. God, I pray tonight that if there's one in here that's not a witness, oh Lord, I pray that they would become a witness tonight. They'd come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray for those in here that do know you. God, they are already witnesses. They've witnessed your grace and mercy. And God, here's what I ask. Convict them if they're not being a good witness. That they would choose to become a good witness. Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can do tonight. We thank you and love you. It's in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, Brother Jim.